Kojo 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 Namaste So as always I'm going to be keeping it as short as possible from my end and all of you are here to hear Vivek so Vivek when we talk about uh, so the title is the changing landscape of indian cinema so we are at least we should try to keep it to indian cinema we should not stick to just a type of cinema so so let's start here what do you think are the different waves that we've had in indian cinema post independence uske pehle ki baat nahi karte oh yeah of course of course and um, i always say if you want to understand forget cinema if you want to understand the evolution of india it's very important to study either the villain or the hero of indian cinema and see how it is changing with the aspirations of people with with government policies and the changing global uh, uh, economy and politics so when india got independence uh, just take hero and the villain who used to be the hero and who used to be the villain the villain was necessarily uh, around that time or before that in 40s if you see um, zamindar because we were a village oriented society and the zamindar used to be the oppressor and the oppressed was kisan ka beta or landless uh, farmer ka beta and he would stand up and take revenge and ultimately he would win but he was always somebody who was a common man can relate with a poor guy and then slowly this uh, villain zamindar moved to uh, cities and he became a mill owner textile mill ka malik 50s ki baat hai ye and again the villain uh, the hero used to be a common man a very uh, poor guy either a uh, kisi mazdoor ka beta ya kisi trade union wale ka beta ya teacher son or somebody's uh, son and that change in 60s 60s he became an industrialist because india was going into big uh, dams and all these big universities colleges road and industry was coming up cement industry started coming in uh, steel industry tata became uh, uh, more powerful the new cars start indian cars in 60s ambassador fiat started coming in and but because of the socialist policies of the government of india industrialists were hated the political narrative was ki sare industrialists chor hote hain so therefore films also started projecting industrialists as chor people and again uh, the the hero was son of a trade union or something or ye 70s tak chalta raha up to emergency uh, late emergency and that's why you see diwar is a very iconic film of that time uh, then came the phase of suddenly these industrialists because uh banks were nationalized the tax department was corrupt and it was impossible to do business in india most of the industrialists it was assumed that they were now uh, doing money laundering investing money with smugglers and smugglers started taking over the real uh, power of this underbelly of indian economy and that's when you see smugglers started becoming villains there was no zamindar no industrialist no mill owner zamindar or oh, sorry uh, smuggler और अगेन एक किसी टीचर का या क्लर्क का बेटा जो है वो स्मगलर को पहले ज्वाइन करेगा फिर उसका पर्दाफाश करेगा और यहां तक कॉमन मैन की लड़ाई चल रही है सोशल ईवल के साथ कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है दीज फिल्म्स वेदर दे आर मेड बाय नेशनलिस्ट लाइक मनोज कुमार वेदर दे वर मेड लाइक मेड बाय कम्युनिस्ट लाइक और इप्टा पीपल बिमल रॉय एंड ऑल दीज पीपल बट देवर इन इंडियन मिल्यू देवर नेवर एवर एंटी इंडिया और एंटी हिंदू दीज फिल्म फिर 80s वॉज अ वेरी कन्फ्यूज इरा वेयर देर वॉज डर्थ ऑफ इंडियन हिंदी राइटर्स एंड फ्रॉम साउथ इफ यू सी ऑल दीज राइटर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स केम फ्रॉम साउथ एंड देन स्टार्टेड दिस कादर खान फेज यू नो एंड दिस शोड द नेक्सेस ऑफ स्मगलर पॉलिटिशियन एंड पुलिस एंड आई एस ऑफिसर्स सो मोस्ट ऑफ द एटीज फिल्म इफ यू सी इट वॉज अबाउट द नेक्सेस एंड दैट्स वन अगेन अ कॉमन हीरो फ्रॉम लोअर मिडल क्लास he would pick up a gun go to vidhan sabha kill all the politicians or he will even even if you see see uh, this film damini okay it was common man sunny deol versus this powerful lawyer which means people in 
late 80s and early 90s were realizing that all these big intellectuals, powerful influencers, they are all part of a nexus and they are all corrupt people. So there was very anti-elitism somewhere was the undercurrent and that's why those films were made. And then after 90s, we got liberalized. Liberalization came. Liberali liberalization, I think, uh, changed everything in Bollywood. Because the aspiration of common youth was not to be happy with Bata and Corona. And he said, yes, we don't care about corruption, we don't care about these things, we want to be part of the global world. And that's when Shah Rukh Khan Karan Johar era came. And uh, our hero used to be an NRI. If not NRI, he would immediately go to uh, Europe or US. He'll romance there or do whatever he has to do. And slowly, the common man and the common villain, they were eliminated from films. It was taken over by moneyed hero, hero of a rich father. And uh, there was no villain left. The villain was basically uh, the girl's father or some inane person was villain. And we survived with that kind of cinema, dance, drama, costume, ostentatious, very superficial. And we invented a term called mindless, brainless film. Are yaar, dimaag ghar pe chhod do, ye wo, and all that. And we were not investing anything which was deeper. And that phase, I think, continued till uh, 2015, 16, 17. And then people, with the change of the government, nationalism came back, patriotism came back. And then after a long time, uh, films like Uri came, or uh, even I got chance to make a film like uh, The Tashkent Files, Buddha in a Traffic Jam, which I made in 2010, released in 2016. You know, and because of the digitalization, and especially after COVID, people said, now we want to know the real story about India because of the political change. Everybody is saying Indian history is wrong, Indian history is wrong. And Nehru was not the real uh, hero. Heroes were different. There was debate on Savarkar. There was debate on Kashmir, Bengal, Kerala. In fact, almost all issues of India, this glorification of Mughals or the British and all that. Then younger lot, who somebody who was 10 year old in 2014, Today, he's a 18-year-old young man who wants to know, tell me the real history of India. Tell me what is the truth. And therefore, you see the Kashmir Files uh, kind of film worked. The even uh, patriotic films are working now. Nationalistic films are working. So this is how I think Indian uh, landscape of Indian cinema changed. So, if, <coughs> so what is very interesting is that a significant phase that you talk about was whether from a Marxist lens or from a nationalist lens, was of the celebration of the underdog, right? Yeah. So the underdog was always the celebration celebrated. of a common man. Yeah. But this cinema se nahi gaya bua. If you see post 2000, slowly as private television came, even from news, common man disappeared. Even from magazines, common man disappeared. Look at the novels which uh, which came after 2000. These were all talking about high society high things and the whole culture became more club culture and we were enjoying our new wealth and new cars and new ACs and everything. Nobody wanted to look at the real problems of India. And therefore there is no common man anywhere left today in uh, Indian discourse. But don't you think that, that this change, now obviously post-liberalization we have seen some changes, but the fruits of liberalization also have had a disproportionate impact on I guess cinema used to also be, in a way, a comfort for people that koi to hai jo hamare le bol raha hai ya hamare baare mein kar raha hai, kind of a scenario. Somebody is talking for us. But do you think that post-liberalization, this has been a drawback in cinema that it has stopped caring for those issues? And this is where some level of antagonism has come in the mind of a few people about cinema in general then? See, two, three things happen. First of all, there is a very dangerous thing which is happening in India and I want everybody to know. What happened before, liberal, I mean, post-liberalization, around 2000, earlier, all the films were made by independent producers. And these producers are very rooted in Indian customs. They knew everything about India. You see, Raj Kapoor was a lot of holy Diwali. Amitabh Bachchan's house is also a holy Diwali. They were all in Prakash Mehra, Oman Mohan. They were all doing something. That's why they were in their films. But then this new generation of moneyed kids, the second generation, Raj Kapoor's uh, children or uh, Prakash Mehra's children or Yash Chopra's children or Yash Johar's children, 
they they didn't know anything about india you know most of them studied in switzerland and london and everywhere they had no clue about india so when they came back they came back with the aspirations of impressing their friends who were in london and new york you know and sharukh and all they started this new impress nri uh, movement they forgot about india they didn't care and it was a true thing second thing which happened was that all these multinational production studios came into india 20th century fox viacom and all these uh, universal sony they came and when they came with their money muscle then the independent producer yashi aaj bhi mujhe pata hai ki wo ghanto ghanto year jo bhi writer aa jaye aaja tusi baith ja suna kya kahani hai aur wo kahaniyan sunte rehte the aur maine jab main when i entered film industry i there was a culture of sitting sitting means you sit discuss talk argue das bara har department ke log baithte the today nobody meets each other i mean you may have a story writer or script writer you may not see his face more than twice in the journey of film making you, he doesn't care about you don't care it's all professional so jo studios aaye the in these studios what they did was uh, and the traditional actors were not signing films of studios so they came dumping kind of thing they started buying so somebody who charged 1 crore they said just give him 2 crores and buy him off and that's how star prices suddenly changed they bypass directors writers producers everybody today there are hardly any indian who's a indian producer name one except for aditya chopra tell me or sajid nadiyad wala bhi nahi because they are also making money with the finances of uh, uh, american studios karan dharma also makes films with uh, their money and all the copyrights everything stays with the uh, hollywood studios except for aditya chopra there is no producer in india i am perhaps we are trying to be an independent 100% indian producer but there is no indian producers left second thing which is very dangerous and i think every single indian must know i know it's going on tv people will watch it which is all jaise east india company aayi thi aur dheere dheere all cotton factories because they started financing them unko मॉडगेज पे रख दिया था और सारी देर स्टार्टेड ओनिंग दैम सो कानपुर बिकेम मैनचेस्टर एक्चुअली ऑल योर कॉन्टेंट टूडे वी गो गागा ओवर ओ टी टी सीरीज अरे ओ टी टी देख के क्या मजा आ रहा है मजा आ रहा है आपको आज बट ऑल द आई पी ऑफ इंडिया क्रिएटेड बाई इंडियंस इज ओन बाई अमेरिकन डू यू रियलाइज दैट देर इज नो ओ टी टी कंपनी एक्सेप्ट फॉर जी फाइव टूडे इन इंडिया बट जी फाइव the problem is that they they don't go globally in they have some technical issues all over the world as of now but netflix amazon uh, hotstar sony all these are american companies and even if you make a feature film if you make say the film which you have loved the most or you say this is my film a great indian film uri but ultimately uri is with z my film is z but suppose amazon or netflix rrr great indian film even if it wins a oscar it's winning for an american company not for india do you realize that so you are selling all your ip these greedy producers they are selling all the ip to foreign companies and just wait and watch see what happens after 15 20 years there will be no indian directors writers left this is the problem so at a creative level what could be the possible drawbacks uh, so let me play the devil's advocate here uh, maybe a consumer might say meko to picture dekhni hai what do i care i'm just trying to throw that idea but from a creative perspective what are the possible roadblocks in this change in landscape where more and more control from outside companies would uh, creativity be muzzled in that scenario no see the thing is they are into number game they want content they say okay mr karan johar this year you give me 10 films so here is a blanket signature this is the content give me 10 films now they make any kind of crap and they sell it to them even if you look at most of the movies which have gone directly to ott look at the quality of those films and try to understand i mean i am not against any film i am absolutely trust me i am telling you from the bottom of my heart because every single word of mine is scrutinized but i am an honest man uh see few films which have come they have nothing to do with india nobody behaves like that in india nobody thinks like that in india nobody dresses up like that in india gehraiyan even the richest of the richest people in india don't do don't live like that or or 
now you will say it's entertainment fine entertainment <laughs> it's a very abused word entertainment does not mean that tomorrow are you start making film on chinese culture and culture which does not exist i mean a film cannot be isolated from the culture so what is happening is you are just making films what you like so it's become more personal thing what is your personal aspiration and ambition you're not making it for the masses so making movies for the masses when people have stopped that's why people have stopped going second another very big problem is that the studio model works primarily on uh, personalities so therefore they encourage that even if you are not a film real film star even if you are a ott star they invest a lot of money in creating a big image for you and you will find that most of the pictures which are uh, printed or people who have big names and all they hardly do movies they just go to airports and gyms and the pictures are being circulated and you are creating stars out of nobodies and i think it's a dangerous trend uh, when you without substance you start creating stars or faking uh, stardom so one thing that gets neglected and i wanted to know your thoughts is a lot of times when indian cinema is discussed we give way too much uh, i'm not saying this in a positive or a negative way but disproportionate amount of time is given to hindi language cinema or hindustani language cinema whichever you want to call it i mean it they don't speak in shuddha hindi so i guess it's hindustani the dialect that they use but let's say uh, you and i are from mumbai so marathi cinema is there um, or gujarati cinema is there i i forgot the name uh, like a lot of my gujarati friends are looking forward to this particular <coughs> gujarati movie that is coming up yeah 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 ah uh nowadays we we talk about only southern indian cinema as a viable alternative but what do you make of maybe let's say a natasamrat kind of a movie or many others that have come like i have seen a few marathi movies i thoroughly enjoyed them uh where where do you see do you see a revival of other regional languages in india in terms of cinema of course i think i think if you look at the quality of marathi cinema uh you look at malayalam cinema whether you agree or not see leave the politics aside uh the the malayalam cinema i think is uh, brilliant then uh, tamil uh, uh, independent cinema is uh, brilliant now some odia films have come which are very good gujarati gujarati you said are doing well so regional level there has never been problem there have they have been making because they are more rooted and the minute you have a regional language then you have to pick up regional literature then your people have to reflect the local culture and all those things why a film like sarayat when it was sarayat sarat uh, uh, sarayat thi na kya naam tha wo sarayat sorry i'm sorry sarayat when sarayat was made in hindi the film didn't work because aapne ethos to maharashtra ka pakad liya aur usko aap national level pe jab dikha rahe the to wo na yahan ki rahi na wahan ki rahi aisa bhi nahi ki unne adapt karke usko mainstream banaya ho so the problem is that there are lot of great regional films are being made but we have never been able to develop a culture where people go and see those films because the distribution chains are national right they don't pick up regional cinema for national distribution but i am very happy that now films like kantara and uh, kashmir files on one hand we were most successful in for the first time in the history of indian cinema a hindi film started with one cinema hall in kerala and ran for 6 weeks up to 25 or 30 cinema halls household now this is a changing trend kantara worked in north kashmir files worked in south i think that is a changing but saying that uh, all other cinema does not exist and only south films are great that is also i think political exaggeration so do, do you see from a like a lot of times the, these comments are made about oh people are not going to the cinema halls because the business model is uh, not viable etc etc so does that not apply to other cinema or other languages like why it's so unique about hindi cinema okay there is a very specific answer to that the thing is uh, <clears throat> see cinema in india more or less uh, works on stardom we cannot deny that even if you don't like it you hate it there has been debate for since i have been born i have heard that star system is not good but in india it survives on that but there is a difference between the modern bollywood uh, stardom and rest of india stardom see these uh, stars in south you will never find them uh, being spotted at airports gyms or all that 
दे लिव वेरी सिंपली मोस्ट ऑफ द साउथ स्टार्स वेयर चप्पल लप्पल कैसे भी चले जाते हैं एंड दे ट्राई टू लिव लाइक अ कॉमन मैन एंड दैट्स वाई दे आर कनेक्ट विद द कॉमन मैन इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग दे हैव फैन क्लब्स दे मीट दे प्रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ दियर फैन क्लब्स एवरी वीक दे गेट टू नो वॉट्स हैपनिंग इवन इन फिल्म वन थिंग आई मस्ट से दैट इन और मोस्ट ऑफ दीज फिल्म इन द साउथ लुक एट द हीरो लुक एट द हीरो ऑफ पुष्पा so all these heroes are like common man who's fighting some social evil in village or in city wherever that theme they have not left this oppressor oppressed common man versus the evil satya ki asatya pe vijay ye formula unne nahi choda hai uske baad gaane dalo beech mein jo dalna hai dalo vulgarity dalna hai dal do lekin ultimately what people take back the climax of the film that is always this in hindi cinema that that's absent you know that is the problem and our stars are now totally disconnected from common uh, people just to give you an example we have discussed many times this thing during covid when people were so frustrated dying hopelessness was there uh, there was death all around us bollywood stars were putting their pictures in maldives cooking doing parties cooking singing having fun sab log dalgona coffee bana rahe the <laughs> yeah and some actresses were writing that where do you get this uh, lipstick that lipstick somebody saying it costs one and a half lakh rupees how can you want this at this time and all but in south you see what they were doing they were quiet inside home they were behaving like common people concerned so the connect between the star and the common people is very important they have lost this connect because all they are interested in is building their own images they don't care about movies they don't care about movies because uh, 70 80% of their income comes from branding dancing in weddings and all and south stars uh, no i'm not saying everybody not most of them do not do these dances in uh, weddings you know so one last question before we take the audience questions then how do we i guess because of all the children in the room i, I guess hindi cinema is the problem <laughs> problem child so how do we revive hindi cinema i am trying <laughs> we are disrupting we have disrupted the system and i have been trying for a long time it's not today i mean uh, i was i used to make commercial films i would have been richer and better off but then i decided to take this break and go into totally i wanted freedom i didn't want to be uh, answerable to uh, netflix i didn't want to be answerable to 20th century fox i would rather be answerable to puneet goenka at z or some lala producer in india i have no problems being uh, i am willing to sit with them because this corporate executive who spends most of his time in la and not in india he is being dictated terms from la and their politics is so woke i just somehow do not agree with that and don't connect with that so how can i just go and tell some young fresh of the boat or fresh of the college a uh, young boy or and girl that why it is important to make kashmir files now at netflix office this executive now she is in um, some other side and we are doing business together now she is somewhere else she had told me that if you talk about uh, uh, islamic terrorism in the equal proportion you have to talk about hindu terrorism maine kaha tum kahan ki ho usne bola up se hu to maine kaha tum batao chahe hindu terrorism kahan exist karta hai she said i don't care this is our global policy that we have to do equal if we are talking about islamic terrorism then you have to show this also uh, and you cannot show 911 uh, like that's the twin tower um, that uh, america uh, you can't show it in isolation if you are doing that then you also have to show what is uh, what made it happen what was the reaction now this is something i cannot agree with you know so therefore i decided to go independent we decided to disrupt we work in a non star system we work only with actors we don't follow any formula of uh, uh, bollywood we try to work with independent money we try now we are trying to do with the vaccine war our own independent distribution our own money and we stopped hyping up uh, films and actors by paying to social media and by paying to this and that we are not doing that uh, if you see re in recent big blockbuster from bollywood the latest one the i am told that they spent something like 100 crore rupees in uh, paying to social media influencers globally and everywhere just carpet bombing the social media and you just now this is running a campaign like political parties and i am i just i am not comfortable with that 
So I said I'll make my own independent world, and we are trying to disrupt. A vaccine war works even moderately. I'm not saying 100 crores. It's a very small budget film. Even if it makes 10 crore rupee profit, we will reinvest this time in, in making uh, small films with younger lot. I won't direct them. But I want to slowly disrupt, create a parallel kind of narrative which talks about Indian issues, Indian concerns, and Indian problems, celebrating India, and also telling, correcting uh, wrong history. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, we wish you all the best. Uh, I guess we can take audience questions now. So uh, just one request, everyone. Uh, please keep your questions short and crisp, and no marathon sagas, please. If it is there, I will cut them off. And just ask question, please. Uh, please, uh, matlab, uh, pravachan nahi prashna. Hello, sir. I'm Kunal. Uh, nowadays, we are witnessing hero worshipping uh, trend going on everywhere. So, does that affect the quality and content of cinema? Yeah, if, uh, if producers and directors also start doing hero worshipping, then it definitely affects. But we have been a hero worshipping uh, society. Uh, the world has been hero worshipping. Uh, most of our literature is full of heroes, great heroes. Our freedom struggle is full of heroes. Nothing wrong in worshipping a good hero. A good hero who fights the evil and solves your problem. Problem comes when you start celebrating wrong heroes. And that's where I think the, everything suffers, including the society. Hello, sir. Uh, my question is, a year back, I reviewed a movie that was titled Golal by Anurag Kashyap. It's a commercial movie, but it, it addresses issues like the caste-ridden politics, or the secessionist movements, or even the student politics of Rajasthan. So, sir, is the sense of that, you know, addressing such issues, losing in the current times with uh, cinema being more commercialized? Of course, yes. I mean, I am... I used to love uh, Anurag's films initially. Uh, he made Black Friday, Gulal, one more film he had made, I'm forgetting the name. So, but then, uh, see, there, what happens is that uh, you start telling social, social commentary through your films. But once you fall into this trap of star system, then you also become one of the Bollywood. I hope that more and more people uh, make movies which concern Indian masses and not these fake imaginary uh, audience which does not exist in India. Sir, Namaskar, may I have read off? Some girls also wanted to ask questions. Yes. Sir, Namaskar, may I have read off? Sir, 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 may I have read off? हाथ में है कि किस फिल्म को देखना है, किसको नहीं देखना है, किस कंटेंट को देखना है। तो फिर फाइल्स जैसी-जैसे कि आप फिल्म बना रहे हैं, तो क्या ये जो पावर है, लोगों के हाथ में आया है, इससे जो प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं, डायरेक्टर्स हैं, उनका माइंडसेट चेंज होगा कि पब्लिक तो अब रियलिटी देखना चाहती है it's a, it's, a, it's a app. I mean, the minute you are paying money for it and they are forcing a content on you, they are influencing. See, democratization. You have no choice today. They are influencing your minds. You have no control over it. Because we are lazy and we like to lie down at home and watch Netflix does not mean that your life has become better. You know, it's not a democratization. I do not agree with that. Okay. Sir, Kashmir file jaisi film dekhne ke dhanne baad. Thank you. Dehne ke liye dhanne baad. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Vivek, sir. Ek second. Yeah. Haan. 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 Aap bolo, phir kya bolenge? Uh, Mera naam Raman Sharma hai. Uh, sir, jaise aapne ek point raise kiya ki OTT platform, especially jo foreign OTT platforms hai, like Netflix and Amazon Prime, uh, aapne is sense mein kaha ki unka hona, it's kind of a dangerous trend. Uh, Thik hai, aapne ye baat kahi. To, kyun, aur uske liye aapne ye argument diya ki, uh, content are basically they are not rooted in the Indian uh, culture basically जैसे कि आपने गहराइयों का example दिया तो मेरा question ये है कि Netflix और Amazon Prime पे ही uh, बंदिश bandit जैसी TV series आती है या, या पंचायत जैसी TV series है जो which are basically deeply rooted in Indian culture it's that at least that is what I think so ये argument से तो अगर मैं देखूं तो शायद मैं अग्री नहीं करूंगा इस पॉइंट से तो क्या आप कोई और पॉइंट आप इसके सपोर्ट में कह सकते हैं नहीं आपने सुना नहीं ध्यान से मैंने जो बोला 
देखिए जब ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी आई थी तो कॉटन तो इंडिया में ही बनता था कॉटन तो इंडिया के खेतों का था पर उसका मालिक कौन था हाँ वो ठीक है वो मैं तो, समझता नहीं तो आप यंग हैं आप खुद सोचिए कि वर्ल्ड में कौन सी ऐसी कंट्री है वो जहाँ पे सारी ओ टी टी कंपनीज फॉरन की हैं आप जरा रिसर्च करिए जाके क्या अमेरिका में बाहर की ओ टी टी कंपनीज हैं जो वहाँ का नेरेटिव डिक्टेट करती हैं क्या फ्रांस में ऐसा है क्या जापान में ऐसा है क्या चाइना में ऐसा है क्या कोरिया में ऐसा है क्या ताइवान में ऐसा है ये भी हैं लेकिन जो मेन उनकी ओ टी टी वो तो उनकी अपनी है आज इंडिया इतनी बड़ी हम बात कर रहे हैं कि हम इतनी ट्रिलियन इकोनॉमी बनेंगे सुपर पावर बन रहे हैं वर्ल्ड पावर बन रहे हैं लेकिन आपका जो सबसे बड़ा जो एंटरटेनमेंट सेक्टर है उसके आपके पास आईपी ही नहीं है मेरे दोस्त आपके पास डिसीजन मेकिंग ही नहीं है आपको ये समझ में ही नहीं आ रहा है ये नेरेटिव कितने सटल तरीके से चेंज हो रहा है ये जितनी जैन जी है ये आप मुझे बताइए कि ये इसका ये इंडिया से ज़्यादा फॉरेन के बारे में कैसे जानती है और दूसरी बात आप एक बैंडिट क्वीन की बात कर रहे हैं पर आप मुझे कितने लोग यहाँ चलिए बैठिए पूछिए कितने लोगों ने बैंडिट क्वीन बंदिश बैंडिट बंदिश बैंडिट जो भी है कितने लोगों ने बंदिश मैंने ही नाम नहीं सुना बताइए जिस चीज़ का बंदिश बैंडिट कितने लोगों ने देखी है वर्सेज अमेरिकन ओ वेब सीरीज कितने लोगों ने देखी है आपको पता चलेगा इट्स नाइन इंग्लिश वन हिंदी एंड टू सर्वाइव हियर उनको भी तो कुछ बनाना है छोटा मोटा कॉन्टेंट एंड दे ट्रीट अस लाइक कुलीस एंटरटेनमेंट कुलीस अपने जो ओ टी टी सीरियल्स हैं उनको तो दे गिव टेन मिलियन ट्वेंटी मिलियन फिफ्टी मिलियन डॉलर और इंडिया में ऐसे जैसे हम लोग भिकारी हैं ये आप हाँ इसका सोल्यूशन है आप जैसे यंग लोग कुछ करिए अपना बनाइए अपना ओ टी टी खुद हाय सर मेरा नाम अनामिका है मेरा क्वेश्चन है बॉलीवुड मूवीज़ की ऑथेंटिक अर्निंग से कंसर्न सो जिस तरह की मूवीज़ अभी सो कॉल्ड ब्लॉकबस्टर्स हुई हैं सो इट सीम्स कि मूवी का परसेप्शन में ब्लॉकबस्टर होना इज़ फार मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट दैन मूवी का रियलिटी में वो कितना पैसा कमाए एंड इट बिकम्स अ काइंड ऑफ वेपन इन ट्विटर फाइट्स एक साइड बोलेगी कि पी आर पे स्पेंड हुआ है इसलिए और दूसरी साइड बोलेगी कि यू कीप क्राइंग असली में वो हिट हो गई है इट्स ऑन विद साइड ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रम व्यू मैं आपको एक सिंपल गणित बताता हूँ हाँ जी आप अगर याद करें प्री बम ब्रह्मास्त्र अगर ये कलेक्शन का सवाल पहले नहीं उठता था ये अभी उठने लगा है आप प्री ब्रह्मास्त्र देखिए आप जरा जाके देखिए सारे फिगर्स जो हैं वो हमेशा डोमेस्टिक होते हैं और नेट फिगर्स होते हैं मतलब आफ्टर टैक्सेस करेक्ट सारी फिल्मों का ऐसे होता था अभी ब्रह्मास्त्र से क्या हुआ दे कि ने ग्रॉस फिगर्स लिखना चालू किया और वर्ल्ड वाइड लिखना चालू किया नो वर्ल्ड वाइड के साथ प्रॉब्लम ये है कि आपकी फिल्म अफ्रीका में भी जाती है आपकी फिल्म यूरोप में भी जाती है लेटिन अमेरिका में कहीं भी जाती है कहीं पर दस लोग ने देखी पाँच ने देखी हर कंट्री का टैक्स स्ट्रक्चर अलग है हर कंट्री का डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बिटवीन एग्जीबिटर एंड प्रोड्यूसर अलग है तो प्रोड्यूसर के पास क्या रहा है जैसे चाइना में आप अब मेरी फिल्म अगर मैं चाइना में रिलीज करूं तो हजार करोड़ मैं कर दूंगा उसको क्योंकि वहां इतने ज्यादा नंबर ऑफ थिएटर्स हैं पचास साठ सत्तर अस्सी हजार या लाख मुझे नंबर याद नहीं है पर ह्यूज नंबर कि वहां एक एक आदमी ने भी देखी जो इतना नंबर होता है लेकिन उसमें आपको कितना मिलता है आपको दस मिलता है तो उसका कोई मीनिंग ही नहीं है तो ये एक तरह का देखा जाए तो एक कम्युनिकेशन फ्रॉड है तो मैं आपको एक सिंपल चीज बताता हूँ पहली तो ग्रॉस फिगर्स वर्ल्ड वाइड टोटल झूठ होते हैं आप यानी आई डोंट वांट टू से इट ऑन दिस स्टेज लेकिन झूठ होते हैं है ना वो जब कोई लिखता है ग्रॉस एंड वर्ल्ड वाइड मतलब वो हंड्रेड परसेंट झूठ की तरफ चला गया है लेकिन जब आप डोमेस्टिक नेट फिगर्स लिखते हैं तो वो मोर और लेस करेक्ट होते हैं अगर वो स्टार बेस्ड फिल्म है तो उसमें से आप स्ट्रेट अवे तीस कम कर दीजिए पच्चीस से तीस बिना आंख बंद करके वो थम ऑफ रूल से और जब किसी सुपरस्टार की फिल्म आती है जिसमें डाउट होता है कि ये फिल्म बिजनेस करने वाली है तो उसमें से 50 से 100 करोड़ रुपए और कम कर दीजिए क्योंकि वो टिकट्स वो लोग खुद खरीदते हैं और ये कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि कोई कॉन्स्परेसी थ्योरी है या कुछ है ये बच्चा बच्चा आप फिल्म इंडस्ट्री में किसी से भी बात कर लीजिए यानी उनके खास दोस्तों से कर लीजिए किसी से भी कर लीजिए और ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं किसी एक पर्टिकुलर फिल्म की बात कर रहा हूँ ऑल अक्रॉस जिन स्टार्स को आप लाइक करती हैं जिनको डिसलाइक करती हैं जो आपसे पोलिटिकली अलाइन करते हैं नहीं करते हैं उन सब की बात कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि वो सिस्टम ऐसा है वो स्ट्रक्चर है ना 
वो इतनी स्टेक्स आई हैं उसमें उन लोगों की क्योंकि उनकी स्टेक्स फिल्म से रिलेटेड नहीं है उनकी स्टेक्स ब्रांड्स के साथ रिलेटेड है वैन वन फिल्म डजेंट वर्क ऑल दो ब्रांड्स है प्रॉब्लम तो और तीसरी एक और चीज़ ये क्या करते हैं कि जो ब्रांड्स हैं दे डू ह्यूज कम्युनिटी बुकिंग्स तो दो ब्रांड और उन्हें क्या फर्क पड़ता है ना बीस करोड़ के टिकट अगर खरीद लिए नेशन वाइड तो उनकी भी पब्लिसिटी हो जाती है उनका स्टार भी आगे आ जाता है उनका तो ब्रांड बिक जाता है कॉलगेट का अगर पोस्टर लगा दूँ चलता है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि आठ दस हफ्ते के बाद अपने आप रियल फिगर्स सबके सामने आते हैं जैसे ब्रह्मास्त्र के कुछ भी फिगर्स पहले बोलते हो अल्टीमेटली उनके रियल फिगर्स नाउ इट्स इन पब्लिक और उनमें इतना ज़्यादा डिफरेंस है कि इट इज़ शॉकिंग सो आई एम वेरी हैप्पी यू रेज दिस क्वेश्चन मैं अगर इस बात को बोलूँ तो लोग कहेंगे अरे ये तो जलते हैं ये है वो है आज सच बोलना भी मुश्किल हो गया है बट देन यू मस्ट रेज दिस क्वेश्चन कि भाई चार पाँच दिन में इतने करोड़ों हज़ार करोड़ यानी दुनिया में मतलब क्या कर दिया आपने ऐसा कि इट्स इम्पॉसिबल टू डू दोज काइंड ऑफ फिगर्स इट्स मतलब किसी भी लॉजिक से पॉसिबल नहीं है ओके आई गेस वी वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट रन आउट ऑफ टाइम जस्ट वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर मैडम सर सो माय क्वेश्चन इज पोस्ट कश्मीर कश्मीर फाइल्स यू हैव बीन अक्यूज ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स यू हैव बीन यू नो कॉल्ड बाय नेम्स ऑल द अदर साइड हैज नॉट यू नो केयर टू प्रोवाइड एनी एविडेंस और फैक्चुअल यू नो Uh, argument in uh, you know in favor of their uh, argument so how is it that you know uh, i mean this sort of narrative is still building and there is no you know evidence to it another thing uh, after short questions yeah, please short after questions kashmir files uh, people said you know you should donate the earnings to the you know uh, uh, kashmiri pandits also the makers of chakde and you know pathan didn't donate any money to the यू नो इंडियन हॉकी टीम अरे क्यों आप अपना टाइम वेस्ट कर रहे हैं इन सब चीज़ों में छोड़िए ना वो तो आपके बारे में कोई कभी कुछ नहीं बोलता वो तो बो... देखिए आप ये नहीं समझ रहे हैं कितना बड़ा एक इको सिस्टम डिस्टर्ब्ड हुआ है आप देखिए तो कितने लोग की दुकानें बंद हो गई हैं उस चक्कर में रोजी रोटियाँ बंद हो गई हैं तो अगर आप किसी की रोजी रोटी पर डायरेक्ट एक फिल्म अटैक करेगी तो वो लोग परेशान होंगे कुछ ना कुछ तो बोलेंगे अच्छा और कश्मीरी पंडितों के साथ मैं क्या करता हूँ क्या नहीं करता हूँ उन्हें कितना पैसा देता हूँ नहीं करता हूँ ये मेरे पर्सनल बात है मैं पब्लिक में क्यों बोलूँ उसका सबसे अच्छा है जिसको कुछ है वो जम्मू जा सकता है और वहाँ जो बच्चे हैं उनसे पूछ सकता है हम उनके लिए क्या करते हैं क्या नहीं करते हैं हम आज नहीं हम पिछले तीन चार साल से हमारी फाउंडेशन काम कर रही है मेरा काम था फिल्म एक प्रॉब्लम को लेकर अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करना मुझसे अब लोग कहते हैं कि अच्छा आप कश्मीरी पंडितों को पुनर्स्थापित क्यों कर देते हैं चलिए अच्छा है उनको उम्मीद है कि मैं कर सकता हूँ पर मैं गवर्नमेंट नहीं हूँ मैं कैसे कर सकता हूँ ये काम मेरे बस का नहीं है ऑल आई कैन डू इज़ कि वॉट एवर लिटिल मनी पहली बात तो जो लोग बोलते हैं वैसा पैसा आता भी नहीं है फिल्मों में वापस आप जब जो जो स्टार्स कह रहे हैं हमारी फिल्मों ने हज़ार करोड़ का धंधा किया है कभी यानी प्राइवेटली अगर आपको मौका मिल जाए आप किसी तरह से अपनी विश करके जा सकें तो आपको पता चले ऐसा होता नहीं है सब झूठ है तो जो पैसा हमें मिला था उसको ब्लैक एंड वाइट में मैं सोच भी रहा हूँ मेरे दिमाग में एक थॉट भी आ रहा है कि हम उसको ब्लैक एंड वाइट में पब्लिश ही कर देंगे लेजर का पन्ना हमें जो पैसा आया था वी आर वी हैव री इन्वेस्टेड दैट मनी इन मेकिंग दिस फिल्म कॉल द वैक्सीन वॉर एंड वी आर मेकिंग द डेली फाइल्स हमने इन दो फिल्मों में उसको री इन्वेस्ट कर दिया है लेस सी वेयर इट टेक्स अस अगर उसके रिजल्ट पॉजिटिव आए तो वी कैन मेक मोर फिल्म लाइक दिस I wanted to ask because we are all discussing about this uh, colonization of creative media which all which was also your point in this globalized world how do you think we can decolonize creative media the way ott is taking over their narratives are being uh, fed to the you know in indian society see uh, the answer is that it's not that there is no decolonization what is kantara what is kashmir files what was the tashkent files so there are so many other films which are being made okay they are totally decolonized absolutely rooted in indian uh, values but the problem is hum ja ke dekhte hi nahi un filmon ko humko bhi to wo colonized films dekhni hai na to wo hamare bacche bhi kisko follow karte hain to ye ek problem hai par wo mere khayal se dheere dheere change hoga when people come and you empower people I am trying to empower lots of people, but if you see a young person doing something like that, empower them. अभी हमारी फिल्म आ रही है the vaccine war. आप लेके जाइए अपने बच्चों को, अपने दोस्तों को, दिखाइए उन लोगों को. If the film makes even five percent profits, you see कैसे decolonization चालू हो जाएगा. क्यों नहीं होगा? बिल्कुल होगा. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. All right. I guess uh, we'll wrap it up now. Thank uh, you very once much. Once again, thank you very much for everyone, and uh, I'll hand it over back. Oh, oh, oh.
Kojo, 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 Kojo.